Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So today I'm here with something a little bit different. I've never made one of these videos before. It's a speed test between the BlackBerry Key 2 and the BlackBerry Key 2 LE. So even though both of these phones look pretty much the same, there's a lot of them that, that is very identical, there is a bit of a power difference uh, under the hood. The BlackBerry Key 2 is, has a much sportier Snapdragon 660 and it has six gigabytes of RAM versus the Snapdragon 636 and four gigabytes of RAM in the Key 2 LE. So overall, they run the same software. It's got Android 8.1.0 or 8.1, whatever you want to call it. Um, so the software experience is pretty much identical. And for the most part, the day-to-day -day experience is mostly identical. But I wanted to set this up. And if anyone was really out there on the fence trying to, to, figure, trying to figure out which one they're interested in, because of course the BlackBerry Key 2 costs $650 MSRP. And if you want to get the BlackBerry Key 2 LE, Introductory price is $449. If you want to get the Champagne Gold or the Atomic Red Edition, it's $499. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So, let me find the power button here and hit them simultaneously. We'll see which one starts up first. Not, this is, not that this is a very important metric because, I mean, all phones have to start up. So, once it starts up, we really find out which one is faster and better once you get into using the phone. But it seems like right now the Key 2 is just slightly farther ahead than the Key 2 LE. Not by much so. So the Key 2 actually has a SIM card in it. The Key 2 LE does not, which is why that T-Mobile screen flashed. So were it not for that, the Key 2 would have started up just ever so slightly faster. All right, so, and unlock, we'll hit OK. So from unlock, the Key 2 is a little bit faster than the Key 2 LE. Again, really not much of a difference, really not that important at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the sound down on these because we're gonna do a sound check on them also, <laughs> just so you can kind of see what the speaker difference is. All right, sound is all. All right, so the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna go ahead and start one app at a time and then we'll clear it out so we can see which one loads it faster without worrying about having memory issues. So the first thing I'm gonna load is Instagram. So the key two is just a little bit faster. I'm gonna close this out. Next thing we'll try is YouTube Studio. Key 2, just ever so slightly faster. We'll load YouTube. Identical. We'll load up Twitter. The LE actually opened that a little bit faster. All right, let's try, let's try loading the calendar. Well, Forgot I disabled my permissions. Did a reset trying to get the network to work the other day and was having some issues. All right, no worry about the calendar. It's not really that important. All right, so let's load up a game. Let's see which one loads faster. Let's load up Odyssey, Alto's Odyssey. So they seem mostly neck and neck at the moment. I thought I'd turn that off. So they appear to be about the same at the moment. And I'm gonna reduplicate this here in a minute because I was testing this out earlier and I was loading different apps and as more apps get loaded into it, the key two will actually slow down some as opposed to the key two. So right now it's pretty much on par with each other and not really any tangible difference whatsoever. Uh, I will do a sound test here though, so you can hear the difference between the two speakers because there is a noticeable difference. So let's turn the sound all the way up for the Key 2 LE. So hopefully this translates well into the microphone, but this is the LE. Put it in Zen mode and start. I think one of the biggest areas you're going to notice the difference is the actual sound effects in the game. 
Now the Key 2 LE doesn't have a bad speaker at all. Uh, I haven't found that the experience has been unenjoyable, so for what it is and for what it costs and what it's worth, I think that the sound quality is decent. And it may look like there's a slight delay whenever you're watching it, but that's just the screen recording it. Uh, it runs perfectly smooth and fine, there's no issues whatsoever. Alright, so let's go ahead and pause this one. And fire it up on the key two. So, turn our sound up. You can probably tell the difference in the volume already. We're in Zen mode. And here we go. The sound effects, uh, they're definitely louder. They have a more full surround sound experience. The piano sounds brighter too. But definitely the Key 2 has louder speakers and it, I think it sounds better personally. But they both run flawlessly. They both run uh, alto just fine with no problems. But there's our sound tests. So we'll go ahead and close this. All right, so I'm gonna pull up the camera. We'll test the shutter speeds. All right. All right, that's as fast as I can go. I guess we need some sound. Well, I have the shutter sound turned off, but you can see the flashing there, so. The shutter speed is faster on the Key 2 than it is on the LE. So there is that. They both shoot in HDR. Now the key differences are there's a 13 megapixel and a 5 megapixel dual camera on the LE on the back, 8 megapixel on the front. On the Key 2 it has dual 12 megapixel cameras in the back and then it has also the 8 megapixel camera on the front. Uh, I have noticed that the Key 2 does take better pictures than the Key 2 LE. Uh, the Key 2 LE takes decent pictures during the daytime, optimal ideal conditions. Uh, in low light or less than ideal conditions, it really, uh, really falls behind the key tube. So if you want something that takes better pictures, you definitely want the key tube. So now I'm going to go back through and I'm going to open these apps again. But this time I'm not going to clear them out. So we'll see as it builds up in the memory what happens. So there we go. Twitter. Twitter still a little bit faster. YouTube Studio. Key tube still a little faster. We're going to load up YouTube. The same. I think I already did that. Instagram, about the same. So we're starting to stack these up in the memory now. I'll go ahead and load up Android Central, about, about the same. Crackberry. Pretty much the same. So you can see you're really not losing a whole lot in day-to-day -day performance uh, when it comes to speed and quickness and getting things open. But let's load up a game called Mars Mars. We'll see how quickly this loads. So the key two is a little bit farther ahead. So let's see if there's a difference in performance. The performance seems to be about the same. So no complaints there. All right, let's load up another game. This time we'll load up, we'll load up Alto again to see how this goes. And again, you can see that they're pretty much on par. Uh, it seems like the key two is just slightly ahead, but not by much. So, if you had hesitations about getting the key two LE, hopefully this is something that you can see that there really isn't too much difference when it comes to the uh, phones or their actual performance. They both run standard things pretty much the same. The only issues I really had when it comes to the key two LE, uh, after a while when you have a lot of apps open, it will be a little bit slower than the Key 2, and also 
I get a lot of memory notifications. And by a lot, I mean like maybe once or twice a day. Once you get over about the 10 to 12 uh, open app threshold is when you start to get those notifications and it's a warning, uh, which really is just the DTEK security software and the DTEK software for the phone uh, being over aggressive and telling you that, hey, your resources are getting low. But overall, uh, it doesn't impact the performance too, too much, but you will notice as it gets full, it will start to slow down uh, a little bit and the apps themselves will kind of start to shutter. And then whenever you're switching back and forth between apps, you can notice some issues. But overall, you get about 90, 95% the same performance. The real drawbacks, of course, are in the keyboard and in the cameras and, and the RAM and the processor. But as far as day-to-day -day activities, uh, if you want to type messages, if you want to browse the internet, and you want to use it just like you would a normal smartphone, except you're going to be using good old uh, BlackBerry keyboard, then they're pretty much the same, except over here you get the cool capacitive keyboard, uh, you get the 10% larger keys, and the build quality is of course better because you've got a polycarbonate frame on the Key 2 LE versus the uh, aluminum frame on the Key 2. So there are key differences that are very important to take note of, but otherwise, as far as the speed itself, they're pretty on par. Once you get things loaded, it's really not much of an issue. And again, other than the occasional memory notification that you get with the Key 2 LE, you don't really notice too much of a problem. So if you don't care about the pictures as much, uh, you don't care about top line speed, if you wanna run like a more intensive game, or if you don't wanna worry about it ever slowing down, you know, the Key 2 is the way to go. It has better speakers as well. The haptic feedback is better. Uh, the screen is exactly the same, at least from what I've been told and what I found out. But otherwise, they're both solid phones, and they're, that price difference mainly is because of the cameras and the keyboard and the extra RAM that you get in the Key 2. But otherwise, I don't really have any complaints with it. Uh, the typing experience is a little bit different, but again, this is a speed test video, so that's not really something to dive into on this video. But overall, uh, very happy with both of them, and I wanted to make this video so people could see the differences between the two and you know if you're on the fence about getting the key 2 le versus the two uh, for day-to-day -day purposes you're really not going to miss out on anything so that's all i have for this video uh, hopefully this has been helpful if you have any questions or comments please leave down in the comment section i love the feedback and i'll get back with you and answer your questions and i'll see you guys next time